What is the Higgs boson? Well, to understand what it is, we must first understand the general concepts within the standard model. According to the standard model of physics, the world is made up of quarks, leptons, and force carriers. Quarks are the fundamentals of most subatomic particles. For example, a proton is made up of two up quarks and one down quark. A neutron is made up of one up quark and two down quarks. These quarks have different mass, spin, and charge, which the atom inherits subsequently. Leptons are the fundamentals of subatomic particles which don't take place in the strong interactions, a type of interactions that hold quarks and subatomic particles together. For example, neutrinos and electrons are leptons. Leptons have mass, spin, and charge, just like their quark counterparts. Quarks and leptons are the elementary particles which make up an atom and its characteristics. Think of them as the building blocks of matter. Force carriers are the gauge bosons that measure energy and mass. They are the particles that the quarks release so that various elementary particles can interact with each other. The interactions can be summed up by the following four categories. The strong interaction, the force which holds an atom together. The weak interaction, the force which allows for particle decay. Gravity, the force within the gravitational field. And electromagnetism, the force within the electromagnetic field. The characteristics of these gauge bosons is that the less mass they have, the further they can travel. So the photon and the graviton, which are both massless, have a long distance of effect, as we can see that both gravity and light are affected at long distances. Whereas gluons, the strong interaction, can only hover a distance within the atomic scale. Bosons also snap in and out of existence very quickly, making them difficult to find, and they have background fields. It is these very bosons that give atoms their properties and the way they react in physics. Before 2013, a question lingered in the mind of physicists. Why do some particles have more mass than others? And that is where the Higgs boson comes in. The Higgs boson is part of a background field called the Higgs field. This field is made out of many virtual particles which interact with elementary particles. The different amounts of interactions give the particles different masses. When there is a lot of interactions, then the particle gains a lot of mass. If there is little interaction, then the particle doesn't gain much mass. Without the interaction, all particles are the same, massless. When the field interacts, it gives particles mass. This is the basis for the Higgs mechanism. It is important to note that the field is not a medium of particles, like air or water, but rather a field of energy that interacts with elementary particles to give them the characteristics of mass. The Higgs boson is a byproduct of these interactions, and although it is commonly believed that it is the boson itself that gives the particles mass, this is not true. The field gives the particle its mass, and the boson is a resulting particle that proves the interaction between the elementary particles and the Higgs field existent. To simplify this complex science lingual, let's use an analogy. Think of a family that is moving. Before they are about to move, no one is carrying anything. Everyone's equal, or in particle sense, everyone is massless. But once the family starts to move, some members of the family have to carry more weight than others. 
The furniture that is to be moved are the virtual particles of the Higgs field. The members of the family are the elementary particles. In this analogy, the dad would probably carry more than the toddler. Therefore, in particle sense, he would have more mass. The Higgs boson is a consequence of the Higgs mechanism, or in this analogy, the moving, and thus it can be interpreted as the furniture that is discarded into the moving van. Remember how we said boson snapped in and out of existence? Well, the Higgs boson is no exception. Almost as soon as the virtual particles pile onto the elementary particle, the Higgs boson disappears and decays. This is why it is so hard to detect, and why its discovery on July 4, 2012, at CERN. Is so momentous. They found this through smashing two particles at extreme speeds together in the Large Hadron Collider. When smashed, the energy of the two particles hitting caused the Higgs field to fold in on itself, producing the boson. And the Higgs boson, being unstable, decays into more stable particles. Now, the physicists at CERN detects these stable decay products, and using physics and math, they reconstructed what happened before the particles decayed. And this is where they find the characteristics of the boson that was produced in the LHC matches the theoretical Higgs boson, which was measured through developing the standard model equations. So what's the deal with the Higgs boson now? But well, as of October 2014, two years after the discovery of the Higgs boson, much has been elucidated. And although previously thought the boson would offer insights into new fields such as dark matter, we now see that the boson fits more and more into its predicted place in the standard model. Yet, science still grows. We can see this in newer theories such as supersymmetry, which postulates the aforementioned study of dark matter. And I would like to end on a quote by Robert Louis Stevenson, a Scottish poet. Don't judge each day by the harvests you reap, but by the seeds that you plant. Thank you.